Right, let's see how it gets on and cutting this tyre. Getting here slowly. I know the grates I've had, but it is thick. What a core through that one. The edge is okay. That's a pass. Right, here's the tow hanger. I carved through the week using the tracker so I'll put that on the tree let's see how we got on with that and here's the slang and as you can see it's the castrum dangler to move her about swing about especially when you've got bulky items in your pocket you can lift it out right so there we go just out like that just cut this piece of paracord back in much easier to sheath. Right, there you go. That looks okay. Just gives me somewhere to hang my tools as I finish with them. And I'm having a break, just somewhere to hang them up. Because you know what it's like. If they're not a high vis colour, you lay them down, well, it can be a while trying to find them. And it's just valuable minutes that you're wasting, especially if you come out of the woods at night. So this makes life a wee bit easier. And I'll just leave this here on this tree. And I use this camp every couple of weeks. So a nice wee addition. And the tracker carved it out no problem. So I've cut tyres this morning with it, I've cut the paracord, I've carved all these tools, I haven't sharpened it. So I maybe need to give it a sharp, it still feels sharp, even after cutting through that tyre, which is really good. Right, on to my next task then. Here we have a piece of dead elm to my front, I uh, need to cut through some of this. So I'm just going to try the pinky lanyard, I've not tried that yet to see how it is when it comes to chopping. So we're using the chopping area. Bring it us. It seems to be biting in better at the quarter round than the actual chopping area. lanyard just in the local grip. Very dense this wood. No, that's nowhere as efficient. Nearly there. 
There you go. Edge is okay. Right, done okay at chopping. No great shouts there. It's a light knife. So it did what I expected to do. I was expecting a wee bit better performance for the front chopping area, but it seemed to be round about the quarter round, seemed to bite in the vest. Okay, let's see what it's like with a beaver cut then. Right, we know the saw sticks into the batten. This batten is a bit on the big side. Done really good at that, so I'll give that a thumbs up. Right, let's see how we got on battening through a bit of pine. Get this fire up and running because it's freezing. There we go, so it's going through it no problem so far. I tap through it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so that doesn't seem to give it any bother. Yeah, so for battening, that's really good. And let's see how we got on. We're doing a bit of wood processing to break this down into pencil lead size, pencil size and thumb size. Yeah. Okay then, I'll go away and break down the rest of this and show you what it's like once I've got it all broken down. Right, I'm just going to do some shavings and feathers here so that they get the fire going. Right, I'll go and finish this off rather than bore you doing this, but you can see the planter hook does a really good job. Right, so here's the knife after processing through that wood. It took me 37 minutes that I'm just about to show you. I want to show that the blade is perfectly straight, no bends at the tip, the edges are all fine. And I still haven't sharpened it, so it's holding the edge really good. There's the teeth, right, I'll show you what I've done here. So starting off at the front here, here's the feather sticks that it produced. Got a few of them, followed by the pencil lead size, followed by pencil thickness, followed by the thumb thickness, and then my fuel. Right, I've got my platform here, my back brace, two side windbreakers, and Plenty of feathers there, hopefully I'll get that going. The one at the rear is the finest one, that's my addition one. Then I've got my processed wood all the way down here. So I'm hoping to get a log cabin fire done. Right, let's get on with this. Right, got the old trusty fire steel. Uh, it's really windy here, so I'm hoping that the sparks will catch. If not, well, I'll need to resort to the old fashioned lighter. Right, let's see how we get on. Nearly. 
Oh, yeah. Oh. Good. Well, that's how windy it is. Oh. Look at that. Oof. Let me watch my camera. Maybe we're set to get this away. So that just shows you how the wind affects a fire. Right, so the next size up, our pencil lead. Just scatter it on it. I wish all my fires were like that. I hope this is no effect in the camera, you can see this. That just shows you good preparation is the key to your fire. I'll just take this down so you can see it. coming that's the heat starting to hit the ground but yep really happy with how it's performed for a medium sized knife done really good didn't do so good at the, the chopping but it's very lightweight but done better than most knives I have of this size so I can't complain with that so I'm going to give that a thumbs up for fire prep and everything it's done so far Right, thumb size. doing this you can do it for the start or like what I've done today build it as I'm going and I'm just doing it like this because uh, the weather's so bad That. And I've still got my fuel to go on it, but look how the effect the wind's having. So there you go, well pleased with the tractor's performance at the wood processing, can't complain, that's a great fire. Right then, on to my next task. <laughs> 